Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the session for this afternoon. And uh, today we have our first speaker in this session, um, Alu Akinlaja. Yeah. yeah um, who is a data engineer working with DOIT and uh, sharing large-scale data processing using Apache Bean and the TensorFlow X libraries. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Olu. I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, thank you all for your time. The title of my talk is Large Scale Data Processing with TFX and Apache Beam. Um, at the time that I submitted this request, what I had in mind was um, simply to showcase um, a simple implementation or um, a use case that applies machine learning frameworks with um, Apache Beam and Dataflow. So today, I'm just going to be showing a simple implement implementation that you know, it's basically about um, building and operationalizing a machine learning model with TensorFlow Extended and Apache Beam. OK, so um, the agenda is going to be about, um, I'm going to be talking about you know, the background and an introduction. I will be talking a little bit about um, you know, the motivation behind the use case that I used. And then I'll go into talking about what TFX is, why TFX, what are the components available in TFX. Um, also, then I talk about how um, TFX applies to Apache Beam. Then I then go deeper into what my use case exactly is. OK, so um, again, my name is Olu. I'm one of the data engineers with the Dewey team. Um, I'm a big fan of. Happen to be. Um, I have interest in machine learning and machine learning ops. Um, so lately, I've been using a lot of um, um, machine learning frameworks and libraries, um, including TensorFlow Extended. But I wouldn't consider by myself an ML expert by um, any stretch of the imagination. I, I'm just um, you know just getting myself involved in using ML and all that. So um, I said I'm a data engineer with the Dewey team. Dewey is a global organization that happens to be one of those um, sponsors of um, this year's Apache Beam Summit. It, it, um, Dewey's company is um, a Google Cloud partner. And what we do is we offer teams um, the benefits and um, the support that they need to be able to leverage um, and enhance the, 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 the power of the public cloud. Uh, we pro provide technology as well as cloud expertise to be able to reduce um, cloud cost and, of course, help you to be able to build, um, increase um, productivity. The support we offer, the um, consultancy that we offer, is at zero cost to you, the clients. So, um, thank you. One of the things, one of the things I like to talk about is one of the tool and technology that is offered by the Doit team. Um, it's called the Doit Console. I find it particularly interesting because the Doit Console offers um, reporting, and um, it gives insights to you know whatever tool and um, services, Google services that you may be using. If you sign up with the Google team, um, with the Doit team, for example. You get this reporting tool here. That I mean, these are screenshots from sections of the Do It of the of the Do It console. It gives you um, you know reporting tools like this that gives you visualization on you know the the cost that you're incurring on your GCP services, and um, you know gives you a lot of insights regarding, for example, on this on this particular project here, talks about the top services GCP services that you're using and um, tells you about the prices that are incurred on specific um, you know, projects that you have. Another feature on the Doit console that I find really interesting is the BQ lens right over there. The BQ lens actually connects directly to your um, BigQuery table. It reads the information schema of your BigQuery table and um, reads through the um, historical queries that you have run against the table. And from the information and the patterns learned there, it helps you to be able to give recommendations and it gives you recommendations and suggestions on how to be able to, you know, to, to, to save cost and also to be able to, to improve performance. You see on this, um, this screenshot over here, 
I simply pull this information from one of the, the, um, the products of one of our clients. And we see here there are suggestions about switching to flat rates and suggestions about you know, you know, limiting query jobs and other things like that, partitioning, suggestions based on things that could help you to be able to improve performance and all that. So um, once you sign up with the, with the Dewey team, one of the things that we offer, we offer a lot of um, toolings, tools and skits that, that will help to be able to get the best from your implementation and using the cloud. And most recently, one of the main concerns that a lot of our clients, a lot of our BigQuery clients have is about the PSA from the Google Cloud team, um, which is about um, changing the, the changes in the, in the pricing and compute model of BigQuery. I'm not sure if anyone one of you uses um, a lot of BigQuery. There are changes in the BigQuery additions and the, the price model of the on-demand queries on BigQuery. Consequently, you know, um, these changes have caused a lot of concerns with our, our clients. They're wondering which price BigQuery addition would be suitable for their use case. And we internally within the Dewey team, we've been, we've been um, coming up with tools that will be able to provide these kind of recommendations to, to our clients. Um, if you'd like to know more about um, the changes that are coming, there's this article that is written by one of our Dewey engineers that, you know, fantastically talks about everything that you need to know about the BigQuery editions that are coming up and you know how to choose and all that. Additionally, there's this internal tool here that was created by the by the um, by one of the do it data engineers that connects with the information schema again, the information schema of your BigQuery um, table, and pulls information regarding you know slot usages and helps you to be able to estimate you know cost price um, compute prices that you may incur with your use case. So consequently, with this tool, we're able to provide recommendations on which BigQuery additions may be suitable for your use case. And um, this is a manually engineered, um, a manually engineered um, tool by one of our data engineers. And um, again, it connects to your BigQuery schema, information schema and uses that information to be able to determine you know, what recommendation may be suitable. But there, there were still, I mean, at the time, you know, this was developed, my understanding is that there's still a few gray areas that, that are just not clear. Because, I, like I mentioned, this was built on, you know, manually engineered rules and based on the information on, on the Google documentation. So there were still a few gray areas that I thought about, okay, you know, what if, if I use an ML, um, train the machine learning model that will be able to just learn eating patterns from you know the data that we have and then be able to come up with robust rules that will consider all possible scenarios and that's exactly what prompted me into using TFX for my model um, to be able to build my my machine learning pipeline um, before I go into my use case properly I would like to just um, give a little bit of um, introduction on what TFX is this is an Apache, Apache Beam Summit not not a TFX um, Summit, so I'd like to just um, introduce it. TFX is a Google production skill machine learning platform which provides a toolkit that is based on TensorFlow for building um, machine learning pipelines. It's designed to build end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines. And when I think about machine learning pipelines, end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines, I'm thinking about the stages within a typical machine learning lifecycle. I'm thinking about you know the data ingestion there, talking about what type of data am I dealing with? Am I dealing with uh, batch data or streaming data. I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking about the data preparation, the stage in which I'm exploring the data, trying to understand um, the distribution of the data and the quality of the data that I'm working with. I'm thinking about you know, identifying uh, missing data and uh, uh, handling this missing data. I'm thinking about you know, um, adding and modifying features that would help me to be able to identify eating patterns, make them even more explicit. Um, other stages within the, the typical data data life cycle is you know the data segregation, splitting the data into into um, test data sets or training data sets or, or validation data sets. I'm thinking about the model training process itself, training a model, model evaluation, trying to perform a deep analysis on the trained model that I have, 
and then eventually, you know, once I'm satisfied with the outcome of the analysis that I make, have this deployed into, into, the, into production. When I think about all of this, you know, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to be using a particular tool or, you know, concept, I would like to have all of this addressed. And that's exactly what TFX offers. TFX offers out-of-the-box standard components that actually deals with all of this with simple, it helps you to be able to implement all of this with simple codes. You know, for example, the example gen here is one of the components in, in TFX that easily helps you to be able to read your data from, you know, whether it's a CSV, CSV file, whether my use case is um, data in BigQuery. So um, example gen was easy to be able to implement that without writing too much code. Um, the same thing with statistics gen, I was mentioning earlier about you know, um, understanding the distribution and the quality of my data. Statistic Gen helps me to be able to, to implement that and find out details about my implementation simply, in, in a simple way. The schema, schema Gen helps you to be able to calculate the schema of the data you're working with. Um, the transform is where you, it, it's through the transform um, component, you're able to implement, um, you're able to implement feature engineering the trainer is one of the components that is available that easily helps you to be able to train your model. The evaluator, of course, from the name, helps you to be able to perform the analysis that I mentioned earlier. Then the pusher eventually helps you to be able to push the, the, the train model to production. So these, a lot of these um, components I used in, I mean, some of them I used in my implementation. I'll show you a little bit of code um, about that. But before going on, um, I would like to just talk about you know, what the components, the TFX components really, how they work. The TFX components have input, input channels and output channels and they're connected to a metadata store from which, you know, they take input artifacts through the input channel, work on the tax that you want, and the, uh, the result of that, they create an output artifacts that goes through the output channel back into to the metadata store. And these are, you know, the, the, a lot of, a, lot of um, a typical machine learning pipeline are connected. So you have component one getting the input, the input, um, the input artifact, you know, performing the tax, writing back into the metadata store. Component two gets the same thing, does the tax, put it back into the metadata store, and it goes on like that until the end of the, um, until the end of the, of the, of the pipeline itself. So um, TFX components use Aperture Beam um, for distributed um, pipelines. So whenever you're writing a code against any TFX component, basically what's happening behind the scene is that those codes are translated into an Aperture Beam pipeline where DAG is created and then written to the, to the executor like we all know. And you know the executor spins up the worker to handle the work and it does the job, and the output, the result of that is written back to the TFX component. So, what is being what is happening is basically, you know, Apache being behind the scene. I'm going to show my use case in which I'm going to be showing you how, you know, how it shows off in, in my implementation. The freedom to be able to choose different execution engine is one one essential um, factor with with Apache being because every time I, when I choose an, a, um, a runner. It helps me to be able to, you know, automatically get the benefits of that runner. So in my use case, I use Dataflow. The reason I use Dataflow is because of the benefits associated with using um, Dataflow. I have, I have the login associated. I can see the CPU utilization. I can see each of the steps within my implementation, um, within my implementation. So, like I said, Dataflow, Dataflow services, the, the Dataflow service actually takes care of spinning up the workers, auto scaling, and actually helps to be able to handle worker failures and centralized logins and monitoring. So, it's easily scalable as well and easily configurable. So, so straight into my use case, um, like I mentioned, what I just, what the target is to be able to write a model that will be able to, that will be able to predict based on the information provided, based on the data provided, that will be able to provide, um, provide recommendations on, on um, which BigQuery edition to actually use. So what I needed was to pull data from, you know, various sources uh, with the help of some of our clients. I was able to get out 
you know, the data from the information schema from a lot of these projects. And using this, this simple query here, it's from the information schema jobs by, uh, by the project. And um, the consideration that I used to be able to come up with this was based on, um, you know, the, the fact that each of these additions are actually built by, by the hour, by slot hour. So I needed fields that would be able to help me to calculate the slot hours. And um, my implementation was done in a, a Google Cloud Vertex AI um, user managed environment. Um, you know, the, the, of course, for, for obvious reasons, Vertex AI pipelines, it's easy to be able to automate my workflow in a serverless manner. So that's why I chose that. Um, also, since I'm using, I have my data in BigQuery, I have, I'm going to be using Dataflow. I felt, you know, it's, it's a fantastic way to be able to integrate all my, all my implementation. And also, you know, with Vertex AI, there's no need for me to be able to in, indicate the metadata connection config. That's a config that you have to define. It's, it's, it's an essential config within, um, within TFX. You don't have to deal with that because Vertex AI actually uses um, um, a managed metadata service. So there's no need to specify that or, or deal with that. In, um, one of the things that I found really interesting when I started was you know, the, 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 the requirement that TFX wants only Python versions up to 3.9. Starting up um, um, a Vertex AI instance, you know, when you choose the runtime environment, um, Google, the Google Cloud offers you Python 3, which automatically defaults to Python 3.10. And that will continue to fail if you use, uh, if you use that version with um, TFX. So what I had to do was to, you know, downgrade the, 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 um, the runtime environment by actually, you know, installing a, an IPy kernel, which helped me to be able to run 3.8.3. So the, the, the first step of my implementation is just simply to specify all my paths. Um, you know, wrote the paths to, to the pipeline artifacts, the Python model. Um, you know, all of them, I use, I'm using the, the Google Cloud storage. So I just specified all the, 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 the right URL for, the, for, the, for my implementation. Also, I specified the query that I'll be pulling. I'm pulling from the particular uh, BigQuery table in my implementation. And then um, with the TFX library, like I said, um, TFX, it, it's out of the box. It's easy. You don't have to do any special, any special coding. So immediately, I'm able to just write a, a simple TFX, you know, pulling from um, TFX does extensions. That's because I'm using BigQuery. Typically, most of the components, if you look at, for example, you know, my statistics gen, they are from the tfx.components um, library. But because I'm using BigQuery here, I'm using tfx.extension as one of the extensions that is available. And I'm, you know, pulling from my um, BigQuery class, the cloud, um, Google Cloud BigQuery class, and using the, 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 the BigQuery example gen method in it. So it was, again, Easy to be able to implement the statistic gen, easy to be able to implement the, the, um, the schema gen, and also the validator. Straightforward, because the simple codes um, actually run. I just passed, like I said before, each of those components are connected to one another within a typical pipeline. So the output of my, of my, of my example gen is simply just passed into, into my, my statistics gen, and you, you know the output of that of, of what is being read, the data that's been read from the example gen is actually from there, statistics calculated on it. And um, the output of the, the statistics gen, the schema was able to be calculated on it as well. And of course, I was able to identify um, anomalies with my data from the output of the schema gen. Um, you know, with, with um, the TensorFlow data validation uh, library, it's able, I'm able to visualize, you know, the distribution of the data that I work with. And this is how it looks um, implementing this. And also with the um, TensorFlow data, da data validation library as well, I'm able to just load the schema text to be able to see how it looks in my implementation. And um, here, you know, I just simply pass the, the, my trainer, set up my trainer again. It's from the tfx.component library. 
And all I need to do is just fill out the necessary details in there and eventually push in my, my, my um, stuff to the Google Cloud. Um, again, I said I specified using, I used the, the Dataflow runner instead of the direct runner. There's no much difference between the two in, in this particular use case because I was dealing with um, you know, um, a, a small data set. So, you know, and the, and the code is usually just slightly different. Just, you see right there, I have the direct runner, and here I have the data flow runner specified. I'm using the data flow runner because I want to be able to see each of the steps within my implementation and within my pipeline. And so eventually when I pushed the, the data to the, to the Google Cloud, this is how it looks. Um, again, I played around with a few things here. Um, I didn't pass the the schema, the, sch the output of the schema, uh, the output of the validator into the trainer because I wanted to see if the, if I'll get the same output if I used, you know, just the example straight from my implementation and the, the implementation is the same. So like I said, each of these are connected. You run the, the example gen to be able to generate the TFX example that is passed into the statistics gen and the statistics gen generates the example, the um, TFX.example statistics and goes on like that um, for my trainer as well. Again, this could be, could, this could as well just be connected here. Yeah, I just tried things around here using this implementation. And for each of these components, like I mentioned behind the scene, this is translated into an Apache Beam code or a DAG that is you know, running whichever runner that you have. The BigQuery example, um, Jen there, reading from BigQuery, easily translated to this in my data flow. And again, I can see all the details. If I was, and when I was here, when I was running the example gen, I couldn't see any more details about what um, my implementation was. I mean, what's going on particularly with the, with the reading of the data. But you know, with the data flow, I'm able to see much more. I'm able to see the logs. I'm able to see the CPU ut utilization and gather more information about it. And um, of course, after, the, after getting the model, it's easy. It, once you're, 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 um, you have the model, it's easy for you to be able to just run um, an evaluation on the model to be able to understand how well the model performs and does. And um, I'm able to visualize the output of my model by just you know, printing out the validation results. Yeah. So but again, a lot of this implementation with the TFX library, it's easy because they are simple codes that one could just easily implement and, and get out whatever details that you want without writing a bunch of code. Behind the scenes, Apache Beam is being used, and you have it running on whatever runner that you have. So that's all that I have uh, today. I'd like to give special thanks to, to you know, some of my friends that um, contributed in some way. Steve, Gorkamal, Jared, Sale, Asad, thank you all, guys. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Olu. Uh,